From the chaos of Afghanistan to Libya, Lebanon and Sudan, British troops have been called upon numerous times in recent years to evacuate UK nationals from hotspots around the world. These non-combatant evacuation operations, or NEOs, are something the British military trains for, the process enshrined in this Ministry of Defence document. British citizens all around the world um, are under the protection of the British government, and if a country uh, goes into meltdown or war or civil war, and there are British citizens there, it is then the job of the British government to safeguard them, and that could well be to remove them from the country, and that's where a NEO comes in. Key to a NEO is whether the environment is permissive or non-permissive. In other words, whether it's relatively safe or whether there is warfare going on. And ideally, the British government will get British citizens out when the environment is permissive, before fighting evolves. But that is not always the case. Now, this is uh, an operation that is led by the Foreign Office with the Ministry of Defence in support. So the Foreign Office and the security services will be collecting all the intelligence required so that the Ministry of Defence can then plan what they need to do, what um, forces they need, what resources they need, and where um, they need to set up their forces. So how does a NEO work? The decision to evacuate is made by a Foreign Office Gold Commander in London. For the military to become involved, the Foreign Secretary makes a formal request to the Defence Secretary for assistance. The Chief of the Defence Staff then appoints the overall NEO commanders. The Joint Commander, usually the Chief of Joint Operations, runs the mission from permanent joint headquarters at Northwood in northwest London. He or she is responsible for deploying forces, sustaining them and eventually bringing them home safely. There will be people on very short notice standby to execute this sort of operation. There will be contingency plans, there will be plans to do these type of evacuations all over the place. Now these will have been recceed and rehearsed by um, foreign office and military planners who will identify suitable airfields and suitable ports. The other key thing that the Foreign Office and the MOD will be looking at is intelligence that's been gathered. So exactly what the situation is on the ground. It might well be that there's fighting in one part of the country um, which would preclude some airfields there. Therefore, the, um, the Foreign Office and the MOD will choose other airfields and other ports to use. In 2006, the UK military evacuated 4,000 Britons from Beirut when war broke out between Israel and Hezbollah. Five years later, when Libya erupted in violent revolution, the RAF and UK special forces flew oil workers out of the Libyan desert. While HMS Cumberland ferried hundreds of UK nationals from Benghazi to the safety of Malta. But it was Afghanistan and not pitting that showed most graphically the complexity and dangers of organising a NEO. With the Taliban closing in on Kabul, a thousand British personnel deployed to the city's chaotic airport, helping to extract 15,000 desperate civilians in just two weeks, the largest humanitarian aid operation since the Berlin airlift. Um, there was a huge amount of people to get out of there in the tens of thousands. The situation on the ground um, became very bad very rapidly with the Taliban taking over. Now, it wasn't a civil war as such happening, but the security situation uh, was pretty dire. And certainly at the time, we didn't know how we could react to the Taliban. So certainly we'll, uh, we'll have learned lessons from that. But what's the legality of British forces entering another nation to conduct a NEO? In some cases, the country in question may give permission, but in most where law and order is broken down, intervention is justified on grounds of national self-defense under Article 51 of the UN Charter. They, they will have very strict rules of engagement and they will all have been briefed in that. But at the end of the day, they are there to protect and save lives. So I'm sure if it is required for them to, um, to take their rules of engagement out and if they do have to engage to save lives, then, then that will happen. But it's, it very much depended on the situation on the ground and commanders on the ground uh, will, will be dealing with this. While the military plans for NEOs, each one is different. Many, like Afghanistan and Sudan, are complex operations conducted far away under a constant threat of violence. In a turbulent world, the armed forces provide a safety net, the final line of defence, protecting British lives both at home 
and abroad. Simon Newton, Forces News.